Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be our final video in the series on Access SQL or SQL. More specifically, today we're going to be talking about the delete statement. Now the delete statement is a very, very powerful statement in SQL in that it deletes entire rows of data. So you have to be very, very careful when you're using the delete statement. And as a result, most database developers have a different way of going about changing certain information in records to indicate that they shouldn't be in use anymore, rather than actually deleting a record. Because, for example, if I look at my contacts and customers table, you'll see that if I were to delete the Metro properties record, say we're not doing any business with them anymore, well, this primary key of ID is a foreign key reference, uh, has a foreign key reference in table one contacts. So if I were to delete Metro properties, which has a key, uh, primary key of one, and I was to do that, I would see that these two records here would become orphaned because they no longer have a reference back to table one customers. Or what could potentially be even worse is if I were to add a new record to table one customers and change the primary key to one, now I'd have incorrect information and these people would be pointed to the wrong company. So it's very, very important that you understand the power that you get when you delete a record because you are deleting the entire record and if there is any sort of reference by a foreign key back to that table's primary key, you're going to be running into some orphaned records. And that can become really problematic later on down the road, trying to diagnose that, trying to get rid of the records and fix them. It can become a real pain and I have seen lots and lots of databases get ruined because of the delete statement. As a result, many database developers have gone with this idea instead. So rather than deleting a record in my table one customers, what's preferable is to go into the back end. I'm going to go ahead and open up the table. And uh, actually, I can't do it in design view because I've got it open right now. So let me close these. And I'm going to go into the back end. And I'm going to go to the customers table. And I'm going to go to the design view. And I'm going to create an, another field called active. And then I'm going to make this just a simple yes or no. Sometimes they call it a flag. Uh, or a true false or a bit field okay it's a yes or no whether or not this record should be active I'm also going to change the default value to yes just so that any new records that we add to the table and customers will by default have yes or true uh, on that record let's go ahead and save that and now I can go back over to my front end and I'm gonna go ahead and open this and you'll see that yes my new records will all automatically have that active checked, but I've got to go back and just uh, check this off for all of these other ones so that they're all showing up as active. Now when you do your queries later on and you only want to see those records that are active, you just have to put, you, ha you just have to do a check in your where clause that asks whether or not the active field is in fact uh, true. So um, the other thing that you want to do is rather than using the delete statement, Let's just build up a quick little query here to show you what's preferable. Um, let's do customers, add that. And we're just gonna say, we're going to do this as an update query. Okay, not a delete, it's gonna be an update. The field I'm going to update is the active field. I'm gonna update it to false, okay? And then I'm going to use the customer name as my where clause or my criteria. And I'm going to say where it's equal to Metro properties. Okay. And then that right there, if I just view it, you'll see that I have two records that show up as active. Uh, that would be the two that I want to run it on. So let's go ahead and click run. Yes, update the two records. And now if I look at my table one customers, you can see Metro properties here has the active field changed to false, okay? And that's a much more preferable way of dealing with things with records that may not need to be there anymore. Maybe the you know customers are no longer customers or contacts have left the company that they were associated with. Rather than actually deleting the record, it's preferable to just deactivate that particular record, but keep it in the table. It's much better to do that. Now, 
there are some exceptions to this, and there are some reasons why you would want to use the delete statement. Okay, and if we look here, I've got a temp table here, for example, and temp tables are a very common place to be doing uh, deletions on because they're temporary. They they're usually tables that you're trying to you know, create some sort of data structure, some sort of data table uh, with information that's very specific to a task that you're doing. Maybe you're trying to build a table for a report that you want to do or a particular form to display information. Uh, and because of that, you've got a lot of gathering and deleting and other things to make this temp table and put the data in it that you want. So it's very common to do a delete on a temp table. And it's also very common to do a delete on one of these many-to-many -many relationship tables, okay? There is also uh, a bit, there's something called cascading, which we will get into when we do the advanced series on access, where we're dealing with the relationships between these two tables, like contacts and customers. You can actually set it up so that when foreign keys are associated with primary keys and you delete one of those two records, uh, excuse me, when you delete the, the primary key record, uh, it will find all of the relationships uh, in the other tables and delete those records as well. But again, that's very, very dangerous. It's it's definitely the way that a lot of databases are set up to, to operate, but it's uh, it's generally, like I said, a much better practice to have that active field or <coughs> excuse me, in use or something like that to indicate that that record is valid. Okay. So all of that has been said in order to try to avoid using the delete statement. Now let's talk about how you actually do use it. So let's go ahead and create a new query. And it's going to be, uh, I'm, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and go right into the SQL view. And let's make this full screen. There we go. Okay. So the first part of using the delete statement is to actually start out with the delete statement, okay? Now, since we are deleting entire rows of information from our tables, we actually just go ahead and use the asterisk. Again, you are not able to use the delete statement to just specify one particular piece of information in a table. You can't just delete, uh, you know, this bishop or, you know, the, the email address that's associated with an account. That's not what the delete statement is for. That's what the update statement is for, okay? So just be aware of that. Delete is going to delete the entire record. And as such, we use the asterisk, okay? Then we need to specify where we're gonna be deleting from. So again, here's our old friend, the from statement. And we're gonna do, let's say, uh, table 10 customers temp, okay? So this table 10 customers temp table has a couple of companies in it random companies and blah blah industries. Well, let's say blah blah industries I want to remove from my temp table. So it's actually fairly straightforward what you want to do. You just go ahead and say which table you're going to be deleting from. So that's going to be the from table 10 customers underscore temp. And you're going to say where, because you obviously if I just have delete star from this table, I would be deleting all of the records in the table. Now you may want to do that in temp tables. That's actually a very common practice for temp tables. But in this particular case, I just want to delete one particular record and that would be the one where we had blah, blah industries. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and I'm just going to paste it where customer underscore name equals in quotation marks, blah, blah industries, okay? And that right there is all you need in order to delete that one record from the table 10 customers underscore temp. But of course, this is my course and I like to make things a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna go with the scenario that we've got this table 10 customers temp table. And I've also got the customers table over here. And what I'd like to do is I would like to, which records in my temp table don't exist in my customers table. And if you look, we've got a Metro Properties. That's right. Okay. We've got a Hamster Wheels Inc. We've got another Metro Properties that exists, you know, twice in the customers table, but only once in the temp table. That's fine. Hyphenated Corp. Well, that's Hyphenated Corp. Yep, that's right up there. Another company 
and Microshell. So there's these two companies, random companies and blah blah industries. These two companies do not exist in my table one customers table. And so what I'd like to do is write a query to delete those two records. Okay, so we're gonna use some skills that we've done before in the past where we're gonna do a left join uh, or right join. We're gonna do what they call an outer join in order to try to find those records that are not, uh, where you know, one set of records is not in another table. So we're gonna do from table 10 customers underscore temp and we're gonna do left join and that's gonna be table one customers dot, uh, oh, excuse me, on, there we go, uh, table 10 customers underscore temp dot customer underscore name. If we just look at here at the table, you'll see it's customer underscore name is the name of the field on table 10 customers temp, but it's on the table one customers, it's called customer name. So that's the field, those are the two fields that I'm gonna be joining on. So table 10 customers underscore temp dot customer underscore name is equal to table one customers dot customer name. Okay, so that's how we're going to do our join. Now, I'm just gonna change this delete to a select just so that we can kind of see what are our results. And if I view that, we can see we, we have two records that don't exist for these other uh, fields over here. So ID, customer name, and active don't exist. They're not set, but they are in the customer name field. So that is kind of a nice little way that we can go in and actually see what, uh, what the results are. What are the, the records that we would be affecting? Okay, so let's go ahead and change this uh, we need to do our where clause, where, okay. Now we want to do something to try to detect where those values are. Uh, oops, that's, that's not what I wanted to do. So we wanted to look at, let me go back again into our query, drop this where clause. What we need to do is we need to figure out a way to detect these two records because we know these are the two we want to delete. What we can do is we can check to see whether or not ID is null or customer name is null here or active is null. So we can check any of those three fields to see if they are null. If they are, then we want to go ahead and delete those records uh, where the customer underscore name, we want to delete them from table 10 customers temp. So we know what we want to do. Oops, let's go to the design view. We're going to do a where table one customers dot let's do a uh, customer name just to keep it nice and simple equals oops, sorry is null there we go so that is going to do a select for right now remember I changed it to a select query and if we view this we can see those are the two records we would be affecting okay so that's great that's exactly what we want those are the two records we would be delete if I just go ahead and change the select to delete all right there we go let's go ahead and run this bad boy specify the table containing the records you want to delete uh-oh we have a problem since in my from statement i am using two tables in this join i need to specify which table it is i'm deleting from so table 10 customers underscore temp dot star that should do it right let's go ahead and run that sucker could not delete from specified tables. Now, you will run into this problem. It will happen. It just happens, okay? And I'm gonna show you exactly what this is. This is some silly, goofy thing within Access. I don't know why they put this in. I'm not entirely sure, but you know what? It's easy to solve. Let's go ahead and go into the design view of this. And there's, and, and make sure you're in the design view because this property doesn't exist in the regular SQL query. You have to go over here to the property sheet and you have to see this unique records. You got to change this from no to yes. I don't know why they do that, but that's just the way access uh, has been set up. So now if we run this, you're about to delete two rows from the specified table. When you click yes, the undo command cannot reverse the changes. Are you sure you want to delete the records? Yes, I do. 
And now let's take a look at our table and you can see deleted for those two records. If I just go ahead and close this and reopen the temp table, you'll see, there we go. Our two records have disappeared. So there you go. That is how you use the delete statement and also how you avoid using the delete statement. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments section of this video. And uh, don't forget to check out the work files that are posted also as a link in the description. And please like, favorite, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, let your friends know about the channel. Thank you so much.